1,000 Ways of Seeing, the collection of Stanley J. Seeger. The whimsical, the exotic, the decorative, the humorous, and the important. Stanley Seeger used this coffee pot, enjoying the fact that it was by Paul de Lamery, the supreme silversmith of early 18th century London. It also had a very personal link to Paul de Lamery himself being the only piece of his family silver to survive, and it was made by him in 1749, probably for his youngest daughter, Louisa Elizabeth, when she was 19 years old and is engraved with her coat of arms. To visualise this window projecting its coloured light over the medieval worshippers at Canterbury Cathedral over 800 years ago is a truly arresting thought. The three knights were not only the solemn attendants of the martyrdom of a saint, but also presided over the largest Christian congregation in the country. It's fascinating to be in the presence of such an artefact in the 21st century. Looking at this chair, I can't help but think of its previous owner. Not necessarily the war prime minister, but as a man with much to ponder. I see this as a thinker's chair, one you'd sit in, reflect and plan the future. I see him here relaxing, with his Paul Roger and his cigar, and I see his thought and the consequent light bulb of inspiration. When looking at Lanyon's Green Place, I can't help but reflect on the interesting relationships which can exist between artists and collectors. Peter Lanyon and Stanley Seeger met in 1960 at the Venice Biennale, and over the next few years, they developed a particularly close bond. Seeger famously commissioned Lanyon to paint the 30-foot Porthmere mural at his estate in New Jersey. Green Place is a wonderful example of how the collector's love of the artist's work endured for decades. Just over a year ago, I went on honeymoon to Indonesia. Those memories of the extraordinary vivid greens of the jungle canopy, the rustic reds of the earth, and the pale natural gold of the native sands are stimulated by this very beautiful Indonesian silk scarf. Coincidentally, the purpose of this scarf, and others like it, is to do with marriage. They're called lawans and were worn by married women on important occasions, such as weddings, and are also given as part of the bridal dowry. This beautifully intricate 10th century English stone carving is a prime example, not only of great national importance in its depiction of St. Peter, but also in the story of its wonderful rediscovery in Somerset in 2004, when it was being used as a gravestone for a stray cat named Winkle. 